What's up baseball players, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about some different ways where you can figure out how good you actually are, especially if you're a high schooler and you're trying to figure out like, where can I go to college? Like, you know, where do I stack up? Can I go D1? Can I go D3? D3? Can I, like, what should I be doing? So in today's video, let's talk about some clear, easy ways you can figure out how good you are. Okay, so number one, this is an easy one. This one's free is take a video of yourself, send that video and fill out the questionnaires to colleges. You go on any colleges, you know, University of Camera, University, I'm looking at my camera. Um, University of Camera, look, go to find their student athlete page, fill out their questionnaire, type all that stuff in there and insert your video links if you, if you know, if they ask for it in there and or send them an email, say, hey, I'm Johnny, here's my, um, all my info. Here's my all my contact info, my stats, my you know SAT scores, grades, all that stuff. Here's also two YouTube videos of me playing, blah, 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 blah. Here's how hard I hit the ball. Here's how fast I throw the ball. Here's how fast I run the 60. Send that out. Send it to, uh, but here's the, here's the trick. You have to send it out to a lot of different schools. Send it out to five D1s. Don't just send it to the top five in the country. Send it out to like five really good, like top 100 D1s and send it out to like five bottom 100 D1s. Then send out to five D2s, five D3s, five JUCOs. And then you wait and see who emails you back. If none of the D1s email you back, none of the D2s email you back, and only the D3s or the JUCOs email you back, then guess what? You might be a D2 or a D3 or a JUCO player, at least right now. And so understand also there's rules. I'm not going to go into them now, like when they can contact you and when they can't. So if you're a freshman emailing people out, they're not going to be able to contact you directly. So understand there is a caveat to this. But if you're a junior and older, this is definitely going to be a good um, way to get uh, just some general feedback. And if you're younger than that, a lot of these colleges will send you back, uh, you know, like standard form emails saying, hey, come to our camp. Or maybe they'll follow you on social media, like other stuff. So there's, there's other ways to gauge some interest. But in general, send emails out and see who bites and replies to you. Number two, go to college camps. These are the local camps. So like University of Virginia's baseball camp or, you know, University of Illinois's baseball camp or you know, Virginia Wesleyan, I, I, mean, I live near Virginia, so I'm just spitballing Virginia schools, but um, go to these schools camps. It's just that single school. They're, they're usually less expensive, like 50 bucks to 125 bucks, depending. Go there and just look around, right? You'll get an evaluation typically uh, at these camps. It'll be real rudimentary because, you know, they can't do an in-depth evaluation for 200 kids. But these are a nice, like, low cost, easy entry way to just like interact with some coaches, like, do, you know, they'll run you through workouts and maybe play a little game and do some stuff. It, they're good experiences. They're worth going to. Um, but they'll also give you a good checkup where you can see players your age and also players older than you and players probably from the school, like helping out with the camp. Like you'll see University of Virginia baseball players or University of Wisconsin baseball players at those camps. And you can see just how well they're built and like how fast they run, how strong, like you'll get a real chance to be up close with the animals, so to speak, right? So do that and just gauge yourself. Oh man, I am really slow and I don't throw that hard and I'm and I'm like kind of skinny compared to all the other players my age who are really serious. Um, and just like, I don't feel like I'm anywhere close to being what a D1 baseball player or a D3 baseball player looks like. Those are really good checkups. That's a really good way just to give yourself a quick update and like, again, yeah, checkpoint, say, okay, you know, I feel like I've got these bunch of things to work on now that I've seen that I'm a kind of small fish in a maybe a small pond, um, blah, 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 and just go through and just compare yourself. So go to these college camps. They're not too expensive. Pick one or two and just look around. Number three, look hard and be honest with yourself about your role in the team. And look, here's the thing. If you're 14 years old and you can't start on your travel team, it's not a good sign. If you're 15 years old and you're playing third base or second base and you're not good enough to play shortstop, it's not a great sign either. I mean, look, there, don't get me wrong, third baseman and second baseman definitely go on to play in college. But guess what? Who's the best infielder on the entire team? The shortstop. So if you want to go play D1 baseball and you're not the shortstop on your team, you have a long look in the mirror at yourself, right? Because if you can't be the best player on your travel team, how are you going to be like one of the best players in your county, which is what D1 players are? Like literally the best handful of players in your county might go on to play D1 baseball. And even those who go on, a lot of them won't even start or they won't even play. So understand that there's a really narrow funnel. And if you're not one of the absolute best players on your travel team, then you've got a lot of work to do. Because again, all the college baseball players, they're all stars in high school. That's, it's like across the board. 
So you need to figure out, hey, if I'm not starting and I'm not dazzling everyone on my travel team, especially if it's not an elite travel team, if it's like a B team or something, you just have a lot of work to do. It's not to say you should despair. Everyone grows at a different rate. I was a late bloomer. You're not, your career is not over because you're not the starting shortstop or the starting center fielder or the number one pitcher. I'm not saying that. But you do have a lot of work to do if that's the case because you're not going to be a D1 baseball player if you can only play second base um, on your on your travel team, unless it's one of those amazing travel teams where it's like seven out of our, our starting players are going to go D1. Those are so rare. You probably know that I'm not talking about that. But the typical travel teams where maybe one or two players on that team go to play in college, they're going to be the best two players. They're going to be the center fielder, the catcher, the pitcher, the shortstop. So just take that, with a, just take that for what it is. That again, this is this video is about you looking in the mirror and getting a good checkpoint of how good you actually are. And if you're not starting and being one of the best players on your team right now, you need to have a really long look about what you can do to improve. Number four, and there's a quick one, go to college baseball games. Too many players don't go to college baseball games. Go to all the different levels. Go see a JUCO game. Go see a D3 game. There's a million schools. Like I live here in Washington, D.C., I could go to any caliber of baseball. I go to big time baseball. I go to small time D1. I go to a junior college. I go to D3. I could I could be anywhere I want in 60 minutes tops. So go to these games. I know a lot of you don't go. You need to, again, go down there, get there early, watch BP, look at the players. Again, be up close with the animals at the zoo. See how big they are. See how, how physical they are. You will be surprised. Today's college baseball player is big and strong. You need to be close to that to be recruited to play for those teams. So go to the games and observe. Number five, rummage through the perfect game and the prep baseball report and whatever, you know, NCSA or whatever local college recruiting service, rummage through those uh, rankings and see what players can do. This is a really easy one. If you go through, you know, like state of Illinois, you know, sophomore pitcher rankings, you're going to see like consistently like, hey, what the outliers are at the very top, like the top 10 players in the state, you know, they might throw insanely hard for their age, you know, they will. And then below that, it's going to like, as you start to go down towards like numbers 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, you know, the top 50 players, that's going to give you a good idea. Most of those players are going to play division one or division two baseball. You know, that's going to give you a good idea of what that looks like and where you need to be to be paced out. So if all of the top 50 players throw at least 84 miles per hour for a given, you know, class if that's sophomore, junior, whatever, um, everyone throw, seems to throw at least 84 to be in that top 50, then guess what? That's a good checkpoint for, you know, being that good. So how do you, how hard do you throw? Is it 78? Well, you're pretty far off that 84 benchmark, right? Or if you're a position player, what's their exit vela? What's their 60 time? And of course, baseball is way harder than just these couple stupid metrics, right? You can be a horrible pitcher and throw 95. Even in high school, there are pitchers who have 90 mile per hour arms who absolutely stink. So remember, this is a bit reductive, but still, it's a good checkpoint. Just have an idea. You still need to be a good baseball player. Please, please, God, be good at by playing baseball. You don't want to go your whole career always focusing on metrics and never actually being good at baseball. Being good at baseball is really fun, and it's a really fascinating. It's just like such a deep, strategic, amazing game. And so just make sure you keep your eyes open that being a good baseball player is still a great way to get recruited to play college baseball. Being a great base runner, being a great fielder. Um, being that super gritty player, like college coaches see that stuff. So understand that won't be on those rankings. That won't be on paper. That's an intan that's intangible stuff. And that's important. But whatever tangible stuff you can take away from the rankings is worth taking away. So just understand like, hey, I do need to be this big and tall, this physical, or generally, you know, generally, and I need to throw kind of this hard and run this fast. Those things are important because, again, we're just trying to say, hey, how good am I and what can I do to get better? And then lastly, if all else fails, I mean, all those things are easily doable, right? Ask someone you trust. You know, at my baseball academy, I had some hard conversations with players. So I'd be like, look, here's where we are. You can do this and maybe work extra hard and maybe get to this point or you can go here. I was really honest with players, especially if they wanted it, me to be like, hey, what do I actually need to do? I really want to play college baseball. What do I actually need to do? And I lay it out for them. And sometimes it really stung and it really hurt. And sometimes it really discouraged them. And sometimes players quit because of that because they didn't think they could do it. But I wasn't going to sugarcoat it and lie to them and say, hey, you know, like you're going to go D1 when there's just like no shot that they are. So getting someone who can be honest with you. And of course, I wasn't trying to hurt anyone's feelings. I wasn't just like beating them into the ground. But I'd be like, look. This is, here's the cards. They're on the table. This is how fast you run. 
This is what, you know, what your baseball IQ seems to be. These are areas that you struggle. This is how hard you throw. Your slider's not that good. Your chain up is really great, but like, you know, like we would talk through it all and be like, look, this is what a college baseball looks like. And here's what you like. Find a person who can be that for you. Your parents, they don't know. Your parents just don't know how good you are. And it's really hard to be objective because they think, oh, he could have so much, such potential. And I know he could do this and I know he could do that. But your parents, in almost all cases, are not objective. Um, they're just not objective in knowing how good you are, especially if they didn't play at that level themselves. They're just going to see, they're just not, they have rose colored gloves because they love you so much. They're just not going to get it. Parents, you're not going to get it. So find someone else who's not a parent, who's really going to be honest with you and listen. It might sting, but sit with it and take it as an opportunity to grow when they say these are the holes in your game that you need to fill in if you want to get to where you want to be. All right. So hopefully today's video was helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions about the stuff we covered today. Obviously, I know college baseball recruiting can be really tough and weird to figure out. And if you do need help on your journey, I've got online courses, my books, all those things are meant to help you on your journey. So I really appreciate it. You help support the channel and you'd be helping your own baseball IQ. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.